Hi there team, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to determine the rotational inertia of the setup. Now I've moved the masses from the outside uh, to the inside. I have to leave a little bit of space for the string can come off. We're going to see if we can compare and contrast what's going to happen to the rotational inertia with them being uh, closer in. Uh, we need to work out what the angular acceleration is for a whole range of different torques. How are we going to do that? Well this time we're going to use gra Vernier graphical analysis. Uh, you'll need to open that up on your computer. Uh, Vernier graphical analysis is free to download and you've got the link. Um, I'm going to connect to my sensor remotely and we're going to measure angular velocity uh, versus time. So on my y-axis, angular velocity versus time. And if I get a straight line on an angular velocity versus time graph, then that's telling me that I'm getting a constant acceleration, which is what I'm expecting to get in this situation here. Okay, so I've got 90 grams, and I'm going to release it now, and I'm going to push collect. And so uh, for that first run, we've got 90 grams. And if we apply a curve fit for the area that it uh, makes sense to and apply curve fit, and it's a straight line, that would make sense too. Um, we're getting an angular acceleration um, of 19 and a bit radians per second. We see that it's negative. The negative just means it's going clockwise or anti-clockwise. That's not too big a deal. Okay, so run one, uh, 90 grams on the top pulley. Okay, we're going to do that again. Um, now with 80 grams, three, two, one. Um, and so you see that I touched it um, at about 1.75 seconds, um, hence that. And so now we've got to run at 80 grams. I'm not going to tell you what the angular acceleration is. I'm going to let you open up this file and interact with it yourself. Um, I think that's where the most powerful learning is. And you can see the challenge of doing this practical in real life. Okay, so it was 90, then it was 80. Take 10 off. Make it 70. This time I stopped it before I stopped collecting data, before I touched it. So run free is um, a little bit cleaner. We wind the cord back up. And I take another mess off. Now, if you're observant, you can see that the, um, the gradient is not as steep, which is, I'd hope, what you'd expect, that as the torque gets less, the angular acceleration would also get less. So that's following tor equals I alpha. Take another mass off. So now I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 grams on there. And for 50 grams, I'm going to be on data set 5. Here we go. 3, 2, 1. So you see that it starts off at minus 5. That means I must have let it go before I hit collect. Does that affect? Our angular acceleration calculation. It would make it a little bit more complicated if we were doing that via um, a rotational kinematic equation, but because we're just using the graph, um, it's still just the graph, the graph. Okay, I take another 10 grams off, so I'm left with 40 grams. And 
like we'd expect as the mass decreases, the torque decreases, hence the angular acceleration decreases. Another 10 grams off. So now two hanging masses and um, the hanger, so that makes 30 grams. 30 grams for data set 7. grams for data set 8 if you're noticing um, you'll be able to tell how many radians of string I have um, and if because you know the radius you could actually work out the length of string that's here if you were a little bit bored um, take that last 10 grams off so I've got 10 left our final experiment on data set 9 and a much lower angular acceleration. Cool. So what I want you to do is I want you to work your way through these data sets um, applying um, a straight line graph to them, working out what the angular acceleration is um, and because I've changed the torque and because you have this video uh, what is the rotational inertia of the rod mass system when it's about three centimeters from the center of rotation? Cool.